Um, did I ever tell you guys about the time I filmed my Nero exam was like a 50 something? It was so wild. What a time to be alive. I guess today I'm going to talk about how I failed my Nero exam. Story time. I'm also getting ready for my shift. Um, so basically, this is what happened. Nero at our school is an eight week course. And just to preface this, Nero is a hard course, like a very hard course. It's anatomy heavy. And the issue is that it's not like cardio. It's not like, you know, renal or whatever like that, where you can go in the anatomy lab and see like the heart has these four valves and it's moving blood this way or whatever. No, um, everything is like, you have to envision it, like imagine it. You see these slices of the brain and you have to just kind of say, this is where this portion is and this is where this part of the brain is. This is where the limbic system is. Like it's so three-dimensional and imaginary. So it's hard to conceptualize and it was very difficult for me. So it's an eight week course and we take an exam midweek at four weeks and then we take a final at the eight week mark. And the final weighs heavier, it weighs more. Um, it's like maybe 60% of your grade if I remember correctly. Um, and the first exam is like 40%. And so, and that's your grade. That's, that's your grade for the didactic part of the course. And so um, I remember during the first four weeks, I was just going through it. Your girl was going through it. I had just moved into a new apartment and I had to move out. My sister was going through something at home in Texas. So I was really concerned about her. My mom was going through something. So it was like all this stuff going on. I just was not focused on school. The day of the exam comes and I'm sitting in the auditorium and it's maybe like a two and a half hour exam, maybe a hundred questions or something like that. I am at question 30, maybe 45 minutes in and I realized I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea what I'm doing. No idea. None. I don't even know what these questions mean. So I was just like, I'm just gonna try. At this point, I'm just clicking. I'm just clicking, clicking, clicking. I'm trying to highlight some stuff. Maybe I know it, maybe I don't. Maybe some things will ring a bell. It wasn't. There were definitely questions where I was just like, we did not learn this. We did not learn this. This is not a fair question. My classmates can agree with me. I am probably like halfway through the exam and I was just like, F it. I just found like through life experiences, C is usually the answer. And if I do know that it is not C, then the answer is D. I start choosing C for everything. Finish the exam, close it, go home, go to bed. Not a care in the world because I knew I failed it. It takes like a week for us to get our exam scores back. So like assistant dean in the office of student affairs calls me in like the next Monday and she's just like, hey, I just wanted to talk to you. I was like, what's up? You know, she's being very sincere, very empathetic. She, you know, got real quiet. She's like, I just want to tell you that you failed your exam. <laughs> I knew that. She was just very surprised at how I was handling it, but I already knew I failed. What did I fail with? Like a 58. Damn, like 58, that's pretty low. <laughs> that's actually really low. All right, I failed my exam. Um, and I told her I had already knew that I failed it because it was like, it was a hard exam. I was just like, at this point, I'm gonna try to do my best to do well on the final, hopefully enough to pass the course, but I may be here in the summer remediating the course. Like, you just need to get focused again. And I was just like, yeah, you're right. So I spent the next four weeks working pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie, I was working pretty hard. Um, I was going to lab extra. I was studying until like sometimes 4 a.m. at night and that's like with going to class at 8 a.m. What the hell am I doing with this eyebrow? Like the eyebrow ain't even cute. What am I doing? Whatever, yeah. we're rocking it. Um, the final comes and I'm taking the exam. It's going way better. Like I have to admit, it was going way better than the first exam. Um, but there are still questions I was just like, why are y'all putting this out here? Like this is not a fair question. We did not learn this. Like when do we ever discuss this? The general consensus of my class was that it was a hard exam. Like the exam was hard as f And I was like, I think it was pretty hard too. 
But at the same time, like in the back of my mind, I was like, it was way easier than the first exam. But I didn't say that because I was just like, if I thought it was easy, I probably failed again. I'm not talking to nobody about the exam. I don't want to discuss what questions you had. I don't want to discuss what answers you put, none of that. I run into the course director and the course director is this French dude. Um, and I run into him in the hallway and I was just like, Doc, that was messed up what you did. Like that was really messed up what you did. You knew that exam was tough. It was you thought the exam wasn't tough. Yes, it was. Like y'all are gonna see me in the summer. Like I'm already preparing to remediate. And I had met with him during like the first four weeks because I had failed. And I was like, you're gonna see me in the summer. You're gonna see me in the summer. You're gonna see me in the summer. So be prepared. I'm not gonna see you in the summer. And I'm like, yes, you will. Realize grades have not came out yet. Rita, I'm not seeing you this summer and i was just like you're not seeing me this summer no so you're not seeing me this summer so you will not be seeing me taking neurology this summer no i won't see you this summer you know what Dr. i don't have no beef with you it was a great course it was amazing i learned so much and i just run off we get our grades I made like a 98 on the exam. Like I was in one of the top scores of the course for that exam. I really made like a 58 on the first test. And then I made a 98 on the final. And I was just like, man, don't let anyone let you think that no one is in med school failing. People are in med school and they are failing. I failed that neuro exam horribly. Granted, I didn't hide it either. And I, in fact, I'm pretty sure Looking back at the time, people were looking at me like, damn, she looked bad. <laughs> Cause I did look bad and I was doing bad. Keep working hard, keep studying, put all distractions, interruptions, everything to the side um, and grind out. Take that exam, take that course as if it is the first and last time you wanna take it and do well. I just wanna let you guys know that that's a story time. Um, maybe I'll do another story time. There's a lot, this journey has been riddled with stories that i could tell you guys um maybe i'll make this a habit you guys have a great one i don't know if it's like the duke in me because at duke everyone was failing and some courses at duke i was failing up until the final that's just that was <laughs> that was the culture baby I went into every final thinking <laughs> if I pass this final, if I make an A on this final, I'll pass the course. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what I do throughout the year. It doesn't matter if I fail every course or every, it doesn't matter if I fail every exam. As long as I can prove on the final that I learned and I've mastered the material, I'll pass the, the course. I mean, I pass with the A, but they'll give me a B, a B minus. So maybe it was the Duke in me. My, my, my Duke friends know. We would go, we would go into final exams like, you know, which, what grade you got? Uh, well, right now, I'm sitting at a D, but really I think that's a C plus. And so that's just how it was in undergrad. So maybe that's why I was so cool with failing that first exam. I don't know. But shout out to Duke for creating that kind of culture where you can fail and still succeed. Where failing doesn't mean that you're failing. Yeah, I swoop that side bang.